Hello and welcome to another webinar brought to you by Forest School Philippines. So today we have a special guest and we will be discussing how forest school benefit your child and how you can forest school your kids even if you live in the city. So as you are coming in, um, if you'd like to participate in the conversation later or ask questions and you'd want your name to show up in this broadcast, please just allow StreamYard. Ayan. So today, our special guest is, uh, she has a long list of accomplishments. <laughs> She's a licensed, I'm just gonna read it, so ayan, para I do not miss anything. She's a licensed professional teacher, a registered guidance counselor. Uh, she finished BS Early, edu Early Childhood Education in La Salle. She completed non-thesis MA reading in UP de Leman. She graduated MA guidance in UP Visayas. Um, she has a certification in special education and she's awaiting her certification as a level three forest school leader under a UK forest school service provider. She is the owner and directress of Maya Forest Preschool Manila and the owner and directress of Maya Abilities Educational Center. But most importantly, she's a mom of two girls to Maya and Luna. Guys, let us welcome please Teacher Bea. I, oops. Everybody. Oops. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Um, thank you for having me today, uh, and I hope you know we talk about something that interests you and not just us. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, marami tayong guests ngayon, marami kang fans, Teacher Bea. <laughs> Sige, so let's start by talking a bit about yourself. Ano ba yung journey mo? Um, how did you end up being in Maya Forest Preschool? Okay, so um. Actually, I opened the school 12 years ago, more or less, called Escuela Legarda, officially. So, I mean, originally, it was called Escuela Legarda. And then, after about five or six years, um, parang I felt there was something missing. So, I also brought in a partner, and then Escuela Legarda is in the same location. It was inside a one-hectare compound in the middle of, of San Palok, Manila and surrounded by trees by the forest. But then there was something missing. Although Escuela Legarda was a progressive school and you know still not traditional, I, I really felt like there was more we could give to the students. And so I asked my grandfather, um, you know, Lolo, is it okay if, if we can use the rest of the forest? Because at the time we were just contained to to some parts of the compound. And then he said, yes, you know, go ahead. So we, we rented a bigger space um, from the family and we cleared up some forest because you know, when forest is not used or not visited, uh, the mosquitoes come and stuff. So once you use it continuously, then the mosquitoes tend to clear away and, and it becomes more user friendly also. So then when we started using more of the forest, um, we, we made the tr transition to it becoming a full-fledged forest school. We did the research, we saw we were inspired by many videos from other countries and it was something different, something we didn't have in the Philippines. And of course, uh, we saw and learned about the benefits and, and I really, really wanted, I felt like that was the missing piece that Escuela de Garda wasn't providing the students of, of San Palok, Manila. So we transformed into Maya Forest Preschool in Manila or a few years ago, I don't know, about six years ago maybe. So when you say parang progressive school, uh, how does it look like? <laughs> and were you like... So progressive a school, a progressive school now? doesn't use... Yeah, it's a regular preschool, they didn't use worksheets or blackboard or... It was um, play-based and, um, you know, no, no exams, things like that. It was, I was happy with it, pero parang may kulang lang talaga. Like, uh, there was more, there was, there was more we could give, more we could offer the students. And um, yeah, we, so I'm happy we found it. Um, Naudlot lang ni pandemic, pero... <laughs> 
uh, yeah, um, we we made the transition already to a forest preschool. Okay, pero um, when you were still Escuela Legarda, you were already using the nature forest portion for teaching. Well, it was just natural because we were in the setting. Like if we needed to do something, we, we had the space, we had the outdoors. So it was natural, but it was natural for us to use nature as part, but it wasn't the focus and it wasn't um, given that much importance or or like we didn't go out of our way to use it. But it was right in front of us, but we were just blind siguro or focused on other things. Parang, yeah, it was literally at our fingertips, but um, it took a while for us to realize how much we had and how much we were missing out on. So what was the thing that sparked, <laughs> that brought the change that you decided na it's not enough? Um, you know, like you go through a, a part in your career na parang you've been doing something and then you don't know if you want a shift or or you don't know if you want something different or maybe you weren't satisfied anymore with what you were giving and um, you want to change or maybe you see you see the product which is the students and, and you see that they need something more to be to, for it to be really called holistic education. I really felt my kulang talaga. So um, um, yeah, I I was going through. Parang it felt like a slump. Eh. Na, are, are we going to just close the school? Ganito na lang ba? Parang there was no satisfaction anymore, no excitement, and I don't know if it was. A teacher um, during my masters who who sent me that direction or a video I saw in class or maybe on Facebook. I really don't know what happened. But it all just fell into place. Na parang oh no, no. this is really um, something that can work. This is something that that has so much benefit, and I can attest to it because I grew up there. I grew up in that forest, and I know what. What the forest gave me so um, why can't i share it also to all these students who come come to us so so there okay when you said you grew up in the forest so you grew up in the area where the school is so the school is in a one hectare compound and inside that compound is our family home uh, and the school two family homes and the school so we moved there in 1994, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. And then, so I, I grew up there. And then, um, you know, hindi pa naman uso TV before, di ba? Or if ever my cartoon, Saturdays lang, Saturday mornings. You know? So we were, my brothers and I, we were really just outside um, wreaking havoc <laughs> in the forest, so. And it was safe because it was it's walled. There's only one gate in and out. So my mom or our or Yaya's never really looked for us. They never had to follow us. There's it was completely safe. So we were outside, we would get home, go outside until it's time to eat. And uh, Saturdays we spend outside also. So it it I felt like this is what the kids need and um I, I can share it with them, of course, most importantly. It's an, a safe place for them to go, especially now where the world is so different from how we were growing up. I mean, before, you could play on the street or you know, you know your neighbors, and now families are moving to live on their own. They're not with extended families. Streets are getting more crowded. Uh, neighbors are, are, are not so neighborly. You know, they're basically strangers already. So it's just a lot of um, uh, hurried, harried, fast-paced world that we're living in. So I like the idea of that when they go to school, it's a safe place for them to really just run. They have the space and the fresh air to be free and do all the things they can in their small homes or condominiums or, or 
the townhouses they're renting, especially in Sao Paulo where the houses are so close together, the streets are small and, and cramped. So it was really like a safe haven for our students. Nakamita ko, sorry. I was just saying, you know, it's nice um, to be to have a piece of um, sanctuary haven in uh, in Manila. Um, so I want to lead into the question of so w when you were searching, that's when you found out about Forest School. What do you think it is about Forest School na na attract ka sa kanya? Well, it was basically my childhood. It was mm. kids outside, rain or shine. And I remember talagang when I was out, when I was younger and I was outside, um, we were playing in the, under the rain. It was super strong rain. And then our old Yaya, old, old, old Yaya comes out and she's like, the usual, magkakasakit ka, uh, maligo ka ng alcohol after or hot water. But it never naman happened. I don't remember ever getting sick. But I do remember the feeling of playing under the rain. I do remember the laughing and the stomping in the puddles. And parang um, that's that's really what attracted me to forest schools. That if other children can experience what I experienced before and still remember still have those good memories of being outdoors and really experiencing nature, then I, I think that was the best part of it for me. The, what really, parang it really sealed the deal. Umbaga, okay, this is this is the direction we're going. No backing out na. Ito na yun. We found what will continue motivating us to continue the school and um, what will motivate us to go through the difficulties in changing, you know, school's name and changing the curriculum and um, and having parents accept these changes as well was, of course, a big a big part of it. Also, having parents accept the changes. Right. So when you changed your name from Escuela Legarda to Maya Forest Preschool, parang yun na yung nag signal nung change then nung would you say curriculum or the way or yung approach to teaching or learning ng mga bata everything changed as in completely the, the aura in school changed um, the the motivation changed the students changed um, just even parang the growth of the school so escuela legarda was doing okay it was um, doing regular, like, you know, every year, when somebody grow. But okay, Maya Forest, parang it just, it took off talaga. So, um, it it was a whole different thing. There were so many things that we didn't anticipate, syempre, so much learning that we had to do along the way. But, but I think we made a really good decision, um, sh taking that shift, making that shift and going down this forest school road. Okay, so um, for the benefit of those listening, Sigura, for the first time, what makes a forest school? <laughs> what makes a forest school different from the usual, like, nature education or outdoor learning? Okay, so a, forest, a nature school, nature-based schools, um, they basically, you're inside the classroom and you can bring the nature in considered na yun nature school. So you can use the stones, the sticks, the rocks, the soil, the water, the sunshine inside your classroom, in the safety of your classroom. And um, that can be considered a nature-based school. It can also be simply having nature themes. So you're going to study about insects and uh, weather or animals or what have you, plants and trees inside the school. So that can be a nature-based school. An outdoor school is a um, school held outdoors, but not necessarily about nature. But the forest school is ideally abroad. Uh, their kids go to nursery and then daycare. So that's the whole day. And not like in the Philippines where the kids don't go to school, especially young kids, they don't go to school the whole day. 
So in the for a forest school is like, for example, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., you're outdoors. Rain or shine, winter, whatever the weather they have in that country. The only thing that changes are the clothes. So the kids are outdoors and they learn the forest skills. Um, and it's not, there is no real schedule to it. There's no set activities like, okay, we'll sit down today. We're going to do this, this, and this. So it's really exploration and um, the, the teacher, the forest leader is just a guide. Steps in when help is needed, but there is no set schedule aside from the shempre, you know, time to eat. Then then they even take their naps outdoors. They have a hammock or put up a tent, things like that. So a forest school is really camping, camping day, camping outside. And the Maya forest is, um, our kids are only in school two, three hours at the most. So as much as possible, we keep them outside. If the activity can be done outside or if, or if the weather is fine, because in this country it's either too hot or too wet, we have to take those into consideration. But as much as possible, we try to keep them outdoors for the two, three hours. Because the rest of the day they're inside in their rooms, inside their homes. So there. Yeah. So um, I think there's one uh, webinar I watched. Na sabi nga nila, the difference now between outdoor education and forest school is that well, yes, both happen uh, outdoors, uh, but the main difference is that for outdoor education, the teacher or the leader teaches, whereas in yes. forest school, it's really more child-led like what you mentioned the kids take initiative take charge of their own learning and uh leaders are facilitators and it provides a lot of freedom and space for the kids talaga na i think missing then these days kasi nga parang i feel like parents are more trying to ram in a lot of activities lalo na ngayon yes. na pandemic di ba Parang every minute has to be scheduled. Eh? Okay. Four to five, you know, you have ballet and then you have tutor and then you're going to eat breakfast, a uh, lot dinner and then, you know, you sleep or whatever. So they don't want to give their kids that downtime. A lot of parents think uh, if I give him downtime, he's going to think about kalokohan to do or he's going to get bored and, you know, his brain's not being used, sign the time, sign the potential, all these things. But in forest schools, we believe that it's that downtime which allows the children to really use their brains and come up with creative ideas of what they want to do and how they can do it most, most importantly. You know, outdoor education, if you think about it in the Philippines, we have so many schools who are outdoor based, especially those who are, who are having classes under the tree or you know, um, open air bahay kupos, that's all considered outdoor education. But they're just literally outdoors. Okay. Although it helps. I mean, the, 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 the fresh air and the breeze and the calmness of being outdoors, it will help them definitely. But it's, it's completely different also. It's better than, than being indoors, but you're learning the same thing, whether it's outdoor education or a regular school. And you're learning the same thing. Whereas forest schools is ano talaga, it's completely different. <laughs> so would you say uh, Maya Forest Preschool is full forest school or a combination of the outdoor or nature-based education? Yes, we call it a forest, a nature-based forest school. Um, it, it has to be a combination because one is uh, we are deaf and accredited, so we, we do have responsibility in that area to make sure that our, ch our kinder children are learning um, the competencies that they have to learn. And a lot of that cannot be done um, outdoors. And then another thing we have to take into consideration is really the weather. Uh, it's sometimes way too hot and like the leaves aren't moving and it's just stifling talaga or um it's too wet and we have you know 
parents worried about dengue, of course, and, and things. So we, we have to adjust it. So although the kids are only with us, let's say, two hours a day, three hours a day, um, as much as possible. And temperate months, there are some months na they're outdoors more than others. Um, but, but yeah, we, we really had to find what works for everybody, you know, considering all factors. Right. So can you share with us, Teacher Bea, what are the changes or like the benefits that you see the children are uh, benefiting from since you transitioned into a forest school, nature-based school? Okay, well, first of all, it was uh, um, parents are always worried about motivation. When a child can't do something, they always feel like he needs more motivation, he needs more motivation. But when we became a forest school, and um, we adjusted to, okay, this is my husband coming out of the room. You can come out. <laughs> okay. Um, when we became a forest school, there was no motivation, concern anymore. Because the kids wanted, because they knew in school they could force them to do something they're not capable of doing for example, reading or writing, and they don't have foundational skills yet, that's when they start, you know, acting out, they don't want to go to school, and what parents see as lack of motivation. But um, when it was all children-led, then the kids could start at a level that they were comfortable with, a level they were capable of doing, and then they could build their skills from there. So. They wanted to go to school. They didn't want to go home. Uh, parents had to wait an hour, sometimes two, for their kids to finally agree to go home. And then, aside from, there was, of course, um, much calmer kids, especially our children with special needs. They could focus. They could um, respond right away, answer questions. They could sit. They had better posture, they had better muscle tone to sit on the floor or sit on a chair. And then socially, they were really much more aware of others. It was always, you know, forest schools, it's a lot of empathy and values and thinking beyond yourself. Because if somebody falls, you help them up. If somebody can't climb over the log, you have to help them over it. So it's really, it was really nice to see kids who for example, are nonverbal and cannot speak, but there's always a classmate there to help them through. And there was a lot of encourage, encouragement giving, um, you know, telling their classmates they can do it. And, um, and then, of course, their confidence, because they could see that they could do it. So a lot of character building happened. Their confidence came, their, their, their person, it started to, they started to shine and parents noticed that they also slept better at night because of course their energy was used they weren't facing screens you know the whole time anymore they really wanted to play and then um, their speech because you have to talk to each other when you're out in the forest you have to be a leader you have to be a follower you have to follow rules you have to make rules so there was just so much opportunity for really their whole bodies to, to be tapped, all skills were tapped, and and we just saw the difference, and almost immediately the parents saw it. There were some who were a little hesitant at first, some who didn't want their children outdoors. But you know, when when you see a child really into learning, really motivated, um, and just that I'm really happy, it is pure joy in their in their faces. As an adult, even if maybe hesitant. Hindi mo naman yung pipigilan eh. Parang it's <laughs> sobrang an if you see na nga that it's working and then you're still going to tell your child no or to stop or to tell the teachers also to stop. That's my child. <laughs> so, um, there. Uh, so, yes, Luna, hold on. So we really saw the... <laughs> okay, you can, you can come. So we really saw the benefits um, immediately and it, it was really nice. Uh, to be accepted also, finally, 
almost 100%, not 100%, but almost 100% that parents saw that, you know, what, what was happening <laughs> and what, was, what their children were experiencing was really beneficial for them. She's I love it. it. Hi, si Mayon, si Maya, or si Luna? Luna. 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 Luna, you want to say hi to our friends? Luna. <laughs> you want to come out? This is the online reality life. Yes, yes, totoo. I love what you mentioned about your motivation kasi nga oo oh, oh, if it's child led sila mismo gusto nilang gawin yon walang walang sakilitan and if if the motivation if the intrinsic motivation comes from the child then boom kahit ano nang ano they're ready ready talaga you try you know you can try to hold them back but then and i think adults spend a lot of time with that motivation of you know after you go to school you do your work we'll go kizuna or i'll give you a stamp or a star or but we spend so much time and energy and focus thinking that that's what our children need that if i give them this then they're going to work harder in school but you in our children they want to please us because they look up to us so they don't want to do something that they know will upset us. They're not doing it on purpose. If hindi nila kaya yung worksheet na pinapagawa mo, that's because hindi nila kaya. Because maybe there are still some skills that, that are lacking. So when they know they can do something, then they know it will please you, then they are, oh my gosh. Hi! 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 Say hi to our friend. This is, this is Maya. Hi Maya. <laughs> okay, so 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 when they know that they can do something, um, they will do it because they know it will make you happy. Eh. They're not going. They're not going to say, "I'm only asking because I'm not motivated." Because you know, pass away. There's, I, I don't, I don't believe our children purposely want to upset us. They know what will make us happy. It's just a matter of. Yung pinapagawa mo, kaya ba talaga ng batang gawin yan? If I make right. my child answer a worksheet and then she acts up and doesn't want to do it, is it because she purposely just matigas ulo? Diba? Or is it because hindi pa niya kaya and it's frustration on her part and which, yeah. which we read as, ano, as not motivated or pasaway? Yan. So we're just yeah. making our kids do things. They're not capable of doing, and then we label them as um, so it's hard headed, I'm not motivated. And I guess it's important that we recognize, yun nga, kung ano yung, I mean, diba, we do not have to hurry the kids na, oh, dapat 4 o'clock, mag, ay, 4 o'clock, 4 years old, <laughs> yes. it's, I mean, That's each true. child is different, and we have to respect Actually, that. Yeah. Based on my, you know, so my first master's was, was reading, education, and all that. And um, really, truly, a child learns how to read at seven, six, mm. or eight. Once you start teaching a child from scratch at six or seven, it's automatic. It will take two or three days. It's a brain. To read. Because his brain and his body developmental skills, everything, is 100% ready. Yeah. Whereas with a four-year-old, we're, we're starting with a, a mind and a body that isn't ready yet. So yeah. it takes a year. And then we're frustrated na bakit hindi pa niya kaya. Yes, of course, there are some kids who can do it, but it doesn't mean it's correct. Right? Just because yeah. some do it. And some schools, syempre, they do it every day. So if you make a child memorize the alphabet every day. Makukuha at makukuha naman niya talaga yun. I mean, it's memorization. But it doesn't mean that we should be doing it. Just yeah. because, yeah. If it takes a year to do it, kaya ba talaga nila? I mean, really? And then we're going to focus so much on those 26 letters 
and it's the master na ba yan, in 10 months time. That's such a waste of time. I agree. <laughs> We're taking 10 months to teach 26 letters. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Whereas when there's seven or six, it takes super quick days. Oh, oh, oh. Eh, na nga eh, parang hindi lang, and also, hindi lang yung bata ang napo-frustrate, kundi ikaw na magulang na you're enforcing it, parang ha, stress. And the worst part, the worst part I see is your relationship, mother and child, or even teacher and child, because it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. The frustration shouldn't be bigger than the love. It shouldn't be, you know, parang you're so stressed out with the teaching for the day yeah. that it consumes your whole day. Your frustration consumes your whole day. That even if tapos na yung learning time nyo or study time nyo, by the time you're night, by the time it's night time, you still feel that frustration. Yes. And then the isip mo, uulitin ko pa to bukas. Mm. Mm. And I, sometimes I tell parents, you know it's not working, so bakit mo pa uulitin? <laughs> right, right. Is it not uh, a sign enough that just let it be, di yeah. ba? And listen to your child. Oh, well, that's yeah. uh, 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 that's so encouraging coming from you. Na may scientific study pala talaga don. <laughs> because grade yeah. one really used to be at around six. Kinder, kinder yeah. grade one used to be around yeah. six or seven talaga. Yeah. So when we adjusted to five, it was just supposed to be kids in school at five, but it wasn't. It didn't mean what the six-year-olds were studying. You make the five-year-old study. That's what happened. The curriculum mm. went a little down. We just mm. added the kinder as a requirement, but it wasn't supposed to be, you know, to put every to adjust all the learnings. Na then, na the grade four will be studying what the grade five is studying. Parang that's what happened. That's why everyone thought advanced is good, but not necessarily. Yeah. You learn okay. things at a certain time because that's the time your child can do it. Not mm -hmm. because wala lang, because gusto mo lang mag advance thing on mo. There are so many things they have to learn. Like when I tell parents, when parents inquire or they enroll in school, they always say, ah, teach, pwede na siya mag-kinder kasi marunong na siya mag-letters, marunong na siya yeah. mag-basa, marunong na siya yeah. mag-ilang. But can he sit? Can he sit straight? Can he listen? Can he follow instructions? Can he hold a pencil? Can, can he do all these things? Can he pack away his own, own stuff? So these are all skills they have to learn before they read and write. Because mm. if you cannot sit, then you cannot sit and write for a long time. You know, you cannot hold the pen. Your neck mm -hmm. cannot cannot stay straight, your back cannot stay straight. So these are all things that they have to do. That's why they have to play before they learn how to read and write. Because the act of sitting is a lot of muscles and then you have to focus on what you're writing. So you cannot focus on your neck, focus on your back, focus on your hand, on holding the pen, on holding a pencil, on the strokes you have to make, and then focus on what you're reading, on matching it to the correct. There's so many things that, that are going on with a simple, match the correct letter to the you know picture you know. there's so many things that we don't see it. Mm -hmm. we don't realize that the kids have to develop first so when they're outdoors when they're climbing they're jumping they're you know, crawling all these things then those skills prepare them for writing that's what always mm -hmm. what i tell parents it's not just hindi derecho upo and sulat it doesn't work mm -hmm. that way they have so many other steps they have to go through that we cannot rush through, you know, mm. no matter what you want, it's just not... <laughs> I have a child in the class. Hello! Oh, it's not Maya or Luna, that's another kid. No, that's ah, si Maya ba? Ah, si okay, so Maya. <laughs> <laughs> zoom out kasi siya. Zoom. I guess that's what, what I love about forest school, it being child-led, na hindi talaga, um, we don't have a curriculum that we have to pick up, uh, but, but it's just uh, listening to the child, kung ano ba yung, ngayon, ano yung development at this stage that he's, he's experiencing. That's right. um, we have a question, Teacher Bea, from Susan. So let us uh, 
broadcast it. It says, my daughter does not like reading a lot. How do I make her to love books? She is 12 years old. First, she has to see you read. She will not read. She will not see the purpose of reading if she doesn't see it being done around her. Mm. Model. And yes, because, you know, it's just like telling a child to be kind, tapos ikaw hindi. Yeah. Telling, telling a child to speak properly, tapos ikaw, you don't. Mm. So you really have to see, hold on. Luna, don't play with electricity, please. <laughs> okay, next is you have to make it part of your, of your day. It's not something that you can take up just once a week and then hope that it happens. So, um, before you sleep, you know, have a chapter here or there. And then, mm. of course, it has to be something she's interested in. And sometimes parents just choose books based on the cost niya, yeah. or what's available. But what is she interested in? She will read about it. You have to, to figure that out together, of course. So sometimes it's it, it's really a, a process of going through what works for them and finding their reading level, of course. Because just because she's 12 years old, it doesn't mean her reading level is for 12-year-olds. Mm -hmm. She could be bored with a 12-year-old book. Maybe she wants something more advanced. Or it could be too difficult for her and she'd want something um, shorter or easier to read. So you find what works for you, and then it grows from there. And then, yeah. of course, you discuss it together as an enough. But it becomes a social, uh, a social activity, and it's not just something. She knows her child. Does her child like to talk? Or you talk to me about the story also, or what did you learn from it? Or you know, you share the book you're reading as well. But you can't just okay give your child the book and then yeah, not let her be. So mm. Some some children like to be alone and, and read on their own. Some like that it's you know they're, it's done together. Yeah. So we have a message for me. Hi, me. So she says, "Sa mga cute, so cute." <laughs> and another, she says, "Agree. Reading together will make it more fun for the kids, also." Yeah. Na answer bas Busan your ano question? So. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. All right, so um, I guess let's uh, go to the question na ano, teacher, na, na, na applicable sa situation natin ngayon. Pandemic, this is what we were talking about earlier, na, oh, lockdown. How do we, how do we forest school our kids at this time na bawal lumabas? Do you have any practical tips for our um, viewers? Yes, so we have a lot of students who are in condominiums. Um, we, we get this question a lot. Um, how can we enroll when we don't have an outdoor space? We don't have anything. And, and you know, I'm sure you have potted plants, succulents, that's still all part of it if we expose our child to nature. So we have a family was able to fly a kite in their little balcony or, or terrace. So, I mean, there, it actually, it's super possible if you're outside, for example, one, the dad or the mom goes out for, um, for, for groceries. We have parents, they come home with sticks they picked up on the way to the parking lot or stones and they bring it home so that their kids have the texture, that feeling of oneness um, with the outside world. And it's not just all plastic and synthetic things they're touching. And they incorporate that in their play. So um, another thing is forest schools is also about values. It's about um, thinking beyond yourself. So when you're at home, you can incorporate the forest school values by, by practicing um, recycling or or upcycling or thinking about ways to help the environment and what you can do in your own homes and um, things like that. So that, that, that's already considered a forest school practice. It's a lot of empathy, a lot of reflection on your practices. For example, how can you make you know, a family member, for example, who's in quarantine by herself or himself, how can you make them feel better? So, you know, you might bake them brownies and send it to them or whatever. So these are, it's values. Eh? 
That's what also I like about forest schools a lot. It allows the child to realize that he or she is not the center of the family or of the world. There are things and other points of views and, and other people out there that they have to think of also. So when you're reading books which are nature-based about animals or trees, and then um, you can discuss things like that. If you're a family that uh, that is online and likes to learn via YouTube, then you can do that also. You can learn about you know, the life cycle of the butterfly or where the pandas, how their homes are being affected by um, by the trees, the, the cutting of the trees, the, the logging or, or whatever. All these things can be done in the home. So people always just think forest school, kailangan na salbas, di yan pwede sa amin. We just live in a condo on the 25th floor and, you know, we don't have anything. But you can plant, you can do those those vegetables, parang um, the, the uso now of, of making your own little farm in your house. There, there are so many ways for you to be in touch with nature and think about nature and have your child think about the future of nature for, for the future generations. So it's very, very doable. It, and, and the internet, Pinterest, or you know other things, uh, there's a, a milieu of resources there for you to come up with ideas which you can do in your homes. I agree with you when you said that it's you know it's not just about being outdoors or having the trees, <laughs> but it's the philosophy beyond uh, forest school. Um, yon. <laughs> uh, so I guess uh, to end our session, guys, if you have any questions, uh, just type it in the comment below. Uh, but if there's one thing that you would want to share with our listeners, the Forest School Philippines group, uh, what would you want them to take away from this conversation? Uh, <laughs> 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 When, when I was taking my, my forest training in Hong Kong, actually, this was a question that was asked. And it's, what do you want um, in your, in your where, where you're from, what do you want for forest schools? And then my response was, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be the only forest school in the Philippines. I don't want this to, to just be a singular or just the two of us, you know, pushing for this. I want this to be a country which accepts it, which has that, op that, that which gives that opportunity, provides that opportunity for all the children in the Philippines. One is because we are capable of doing so because we have 7,000 whatever hundreds of islands out there, which has the natural resources for us to provide uh, the children with this kind of education. Second is, because it is so important that we take care of the, the forests and the outdoors, because this is what our country has. That's always what they say, we're rich in natural resources, yet we don't teach our children to take care of these natural resources. We don't use it to its full extent. We expect adults to come in and understand it. When, when they were younger, they were never exposed to it. And the lifelong love comes from when it, you know, you, you feel it as a child and you bring it with you when you grow older. So that that's really when um, I see your page or I see other parents coming into the idea, there's another group that has added me, uh, I think it's called Outdoor Play or, or something like that, but it's Outdoor Play, P I'm not sure, but something about Play PH, but it's about Outdoor Play. And it's really that I hope other moms and other families join us in this um, effort. It's an effort. It's not it's, it's not an advocacy, it's not something that's out of this world. It's just an effort to get off the couches, off the sofa, out of our homes, and bring our children outside 
to let them experience this. And it's an effort because it takes planning. Um, you know, it has some some sacrifices to it, especially if you don't like the, the heat or the rain or, you know, you have to bring things whole. It's out of your comfort zone and, and things like that. Or it takes a, a trip to get outdoors. But I really hope that more and more families join us in this mindset and in the effort to bring our children outdoors and to let them not just experience it, but also really feel its full benefits in their, in their childhood and, and um, learn how to take care of, of the outdoors so that their children, you know, their future children can experience it as well. Again. Join us. <laughs> well said, teacher. Woo! <laughs> Pang Miss Philippines talaga. <laughs> it's true. Alam mo yun. Um, it's not our project. It's not just the forest school leaders here in the the the, the ilang ilang forest school leader, leaders lang tayo na nandito. But it's you know, we, we need the community. We need to, you know, we need the parents to take your children outside because it's not for us, diba? It's for the generation of the kids right now. So, and I guess... It's even for the country, I really yeah. truly believe that if our children change that, then, you know, when they're older, no matter what profession they will be in, they will bring those values with them because it doesn't have to be about you know being a quote unquote tree hugger or you know yeah. caring about nature but it will extend of course to if you're a doctor caring about your patients if you're a lawyer i mean it's just really a lot of <laughs> a child needs to make wee -wee. okay <laughs> so anyways there it's about bringing the values with you to wherever you go wherever life takes you and and um, I, I think that's it's it's truly life changing you know it, it, it is and I really feel the country will benefit from it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> amen. Can I just say amen? <laughs> So, teacher Bea, ayan, oh, meron kang ano, ang tawag ito, may, meron kang pamuscle from me. <laughs> Please follow me on teacher Bea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, um, if people want to know more about you, your work, where can they find you? Yeah, so, uh, the school is Maya Forest Preschool Manila on Facebook. For me, it's teacher Bea on Facebook and Instagram, so... I, I put a lot of um, of my thoughts there. Mm. Um, I share, you know, not just about outdoor, but in general as a teacher or as a parent. So my, my journey is there also. And, um, and it's for the purpose of helping parents and teachers see the other side. So but I felt like I was right in the middle. I'm yes. a teacher, but also a parent. And Sometimes it feels because it's teacher versus parent. Right? So I felt mm. like where do I fit in? But it shouldn't be. It should be teacher and parent because we all want what's best for the child. The teacher's not going to purposely do something that will not benefit the child. And of course, the mom as well. So it's something that parents and teachers have to realize that they, have, they are on the same side. We have to work together because we just want what's best for the child and a lot of the times all the issues that education comes especially now with the online classes it becomes teacher versus parent and it shouldn't be that way so i i hope when i started the teacher bay page i hope you know to let mom see the teacher point of view and to let teachers see the mom point of view which is at the end of the day as a teacher or as a mom yeah. So but I, I hope that if they understand each other where, where another person is coming from, why the complaints or why the policies, then hopefully, you know, mas maayos uh, world. Mas maayos world that. peace. <laughs> world peace. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Teacher Bea, for your time and for your cuties. Na ano. Oh, say, say hi, say hi, and bye bye, na guys. So you can wee wee. 
thank you for your time. And um, in case uh, there are other questions for those who will be tuning on replay, ayan, Teacher Bea will answer them for you. <laughs> okay, Bea. <Bea-Bea. laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you again so much. I'll see you again next time for another episode. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.